Huda, a light in every home. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi s-sami al-alim. Min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Min hamzihi wa nafkihi wa nafthih. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salamun ala ibadihi al-lazhin as-tafa. La siyama al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathiran wa ba'd. I begin as always by praising Allah the Almighty alone and sending the best peace and blessings upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of your program, Ask Uda. I guess I still need to remind myself and everybody with the phone numbers and contact informations in case that we have uh, new uh, viewers. The area code is 002-0238-555-248 or 249. Uh, I don't know where to begin uh, this time upon just receiving the sad news, whether from Gaza or from Afghanistan, this uh, maniac, insane Marines opening fire, killing at least 16 civilians in Afghanistan, and the Israeli aggression in Gaza killing also 16. I don't know if it is a coincidence. Till uh, last night, the death toll was 16 innocent people. And uh, I would like to begin by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower those who died for his sake, to shower them with his mercy, treat them as shuhada, and to take them to his paradise, pardon them the forgiveness, forgive them their sins. اللهم آمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وتجاوز عن سيئاتهم and give their families their loved ones a lot of patience اللهم آمين and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى destroy the enemies of Islam and the perpetrators those who attack civilians I can tell you that this marines had the guts to open fire and kill 16 civilians our free will with full conscience because he knows that he will get away with it. Like many others before him, like those who killed plenty of innocent civilians in Iraq, they treat them as rats, as rodents, because they will not be held accountable. Maybe they will be downgraded, will be given a lesser ranking, or perhaps will be thrown in prison for a month at maximum. Then afterward, they will be treated in their community as heroes, heroes for killing innocent civilians. This is uh, the democratic free societies, whether in America or in Israel. This is the reality of these people. I can assure you, this guy would not be touched. These Marines would not be held accountable, would not be executed, would not be thrown in life or prison. I know that of many Muslims, for minor errors, even for false allegations, are spending the rest of their lives in American prisons for false allegations, for anything. But for killing 16 human beings, it's okay. No problem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat them with His justice. If we cannot in the time being Retaliate, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat them with his ultimate justice. That's why I believe Allah is the most just. There will be a day of judgment, a day of accountability and reckoning. The, the sad news are making me not being able to speak. But uh, alhamdulillah, we do trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put our trust in him. And we believe that Allah is not giving them respite because they are powerful or they are strong, but he's given them respite, so whenever he seizes them, he would seize them with no mercy. As he sees nations before them, whether of the ancient or the contemporary time, the people of uh, 
Aad, the people of Thamud, uh, the people of uh, Prophet Nuh السلام, how they were punished with no mercy after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them respite after respite. This transgression and this aggression, especially against uh, civilians, uh, cannot be tolerated anymore. Would like to hear a statement, would like to see these guys being tried fairly. Would like to see these guys uh, getting a sentence of at least, like if, if you're in Texas, there is death penalty. But we're not even looking for something like that. We're looking for a serious penalty in order to stop these outrageous activities. But if the criminals know that they will get away with their crimes, no matter what they do, it doesn't matter, 116 or 160 people, they will get away with their crimes and they will be saluted and treated as heroes, they will continue to do that. Get out of the Muslim lands. Get out of the Muslim lands right now. And enough is enough. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um Muhammad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Quida. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, shukla. Thank you for asking, um, Muhammad. Barakallahu feeki. Uh, Sheikh, I have two questions on me. Please. Uh, my first question is this. I have an 11 years old son, and the, he wants to join a Taekwondo club. But the only thing that he is confused is when we saw the practice of the, peop, of the children, they are bowing to the instructor and they are bowing to each other. Mm. So he will want to know if it is allowed for us to do that. And uh, the next question is, is uh, sleeping or taking a nap will uh, make the wudu invalid? And that's... Uh, okay, okay, thank you, Muhammad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, we have been prohibited from bowing down to any other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if I was going to command anyone to bow down to a human being, I would have commanded the wife to bow down to her husband as an indication that she's pleased with his uh, doing. But even that is prohibited in Islam. It is not permissible to bow down before any creature. We're only required to bow down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even in greeting. In Hindu practice, they bow down to others out of respect or greeting in Buddhism and China, in Japan. These are cultural practices, but that too we are prohibited from doing so. So if he is going to enroll in the team and these kind of sports without bound down, that's fine. Otherwise he can make the shout without bound down. And we need to set our own rules in Muslim societies. Bound down to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it is not in worship is prohibited, even if it is as a mean of greeting, that too is prohibited. And naum, sleep, does it void and invalidate the state of tahar or ablution? Uh, if the person slept in a position that he is not sure that he would not be able to pass wind, like if a person was sitting on a chair and he slept in that position, uh, it is not possible for the person to break wind and void his wudu in this case, especially if it is for a short period of time. Somebody was in the bus, in the plane, and he dozed off. So that doesn't void the wudu. But if he lied down and then he slept, then right away he is required to perform a new wudu because النوم المتمكن, deep sleep, especially if you're lying down, uh, you're not sitting. Uh, would invalidate uh, the wudu. Barakallahu feekum, O Muhammad, wa jazakum Allahu khayyam. Sister Hawa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam, Hawa, I hear you. Um, Jazakallahu uh, khayyam for everything, Mala. Wa jazakum. Um, Madam, my question is on dreams. My dream, I do have dreams that come true all the time. 
What is the Islamic ruling on it? Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Thank you, Hawa. Um Bilal from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. I wanted to ask you a question about this artificial teeth. My mother recently had, a, uh, had like six artificial teeth fitted in her uh, lower gum, and it's fitted in one brace, and it can be removed. Hmm. So what her concern was that because it sits on her gum, so when she does wudu, Water does not touch her gum, so uh, will the wudu be valid, or should she always take it off and do wudu and then put it inside again? Okay. This was his question. Barakallahu feekum. Brother Abdullah from uh, Algeria. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But my question is, I, I, I'm fasting uh, every month, Monday, Thursday, and uh, Thursday, 13, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I want to make some difference. I want this month when I fast, when I fast, Monday, Thursday, 13, 14, 15. The next month, I want to fast like fasting of uh, Amir Dawood Alayhi Salaam. Every other day, you mean? Yeah. Is it possible? Yes. Okay. Barakallahu feek. Uh, Brother Abu Hassan from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to, uh, one question, I want to clarify regarding corruption in Islam. No. So, whether a person, he's having only one Adopted son, mm. and I mean he's the son of his elder brother, mm. and he, he he inherited the property from them. Is it, is it Abu Hassan, is it, uh, turn off the volume on your TV set, please. Okay, okay. Now, now yeah. I can hear you better. So Go I ahead. just wanted to know. They are no more now. And uh, his property and all, they are made in his name. In all the certificates and all, his uh, name is there. In who? father and son. In whose name? The adopted son, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am adopted son. Yeah. Just I want to know whether this property, all his, they are, uh, all registered, everything property in his name. So your brother adopted a child and he wrote the whole property in his name. Isn't this your question? Yeah, my, he's actually, my, uh, my father is, like, no, my, my like, so he has, give, he has just uh, given the child when he has just born, 40 days, to his younger son, I mean, younger brother. I don't get it. No, Abu. like, you got my question? No, I didn't get it. Whose adopted son and who gave him the whole inheritance or wrote down the whole property in his name? Your brother or no, no. your father? My, my brother, my father's brother. My father is elder brother. You mean your uncle? Your uncle, exactly. So why don't right. you say your uncle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my uncle. Exactly, my <laughs> uncle only. Yeah. What did your he, uncle do? Uh, he doesn't have any son and uh, no son and daughter. No. So when I was, I was a child, like immediately after I born, after 40 days, he has given the to him. Hmm. Yeah. So after, now there are no more. All his property and all, they are given in my name now. I want to know Islamic rule. Can I take this? Everything is there in my name now. Like, uh, uh, Open uh, space and two, two uh, houses. And he's your uncle, he's, right? Got it? He's your uncle. The person yeah, whom uncle. you exactly. have everything exactly. in your name. Is he exactly. is he alive or he passed away? No, no. They are, both of them are not. They are dead. They are dead. Does yeah. he have... Before, before they die... Abu Hassan. Yeah. Abu Hassan. Yeah. 
Does he have any other heirs, family members who are eligible for his inheritance or? No, 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 no nobody. Nobody, okay. Nobody. And now the inheritance is all in your name and is in your hand, right? Exactly. So what seems to be the problem? No, I just want to know, is it uh, lawful as per Islam? It is permissible as per Islamic law, yeah. You are his nephew. He doesn't have any other ears but you. You, exactly, inher yeah. you inherited the whole thing. So what is the problem? No, like some my relatives, they are, they are just uh, against it. Why you are not eligible as per Islamic law and all? That's I wanted to confirm uh, from that. Jazakallah khairan, Abu Hassan. Let me see what I can do with this. Brother Ali from Nigeria. Ali, assalamu alaikum. I don't blame you. Try again, please. Okay. Hawa and dreams, she keeps seeing the same dream over and over. Uh, uh, I'm glad you didn't have to mention the dream because we do not interpret dreams or into, we're not into that. But uh, what the Sunnah, what the Sharia say in this regard, if you see something that is good, then this is. Uh, an inspiration and it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if it is interpreted by a righteous person it should take place in the future if you're talking about a dream that frightens you and you see it all the time whether it's a nightmare or just something bad you don't want to see then simply turn to your left blow twice by doing this then say I seek refuge with Allah from the outcast uh, shaitan it shouldn't hurt you and uh, it wouldn't because this is what the Prophet said and I also would like to distinguish between dreams and hadith on nafs I want to share with you something uh, this Friday I was supposed to visit uh, some friends whom I haven't seen for a while they wanted me to visit with them but I got uh, tied up and I was so busy so I did not travel to visit with them. They had some more important things for da'wah reasons and so on. So when I went to sleep, I saw this friend in my dream and he was kind of blaming me. So right away I called him up and I apologized and I realized that he was really uh, upset because I didn't go. There are some sort of communication during uh, dreams. If you've been thinking about something right before you go to sleep, most likely you will see it in your dreams. Sometimes dreams do not necessarily mean good or bad. Sometimes they do not make any sense, so never mind. But if it is something good, it's given you a glad tiding or a bishara. You should keep it for yourself and your beloved ones. And do not interpret it yourself. Rather, you may ask the person or the persons who are uh, into interpreting dreams properly because it should come as it was interpreted. If it is something evil, then you should not quote it to no one whatsoever and do as I mentioned earlier. Barakallah fikum. Uh, Sister Dawlat from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Muhammad Saleh, how are you today? Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking Sister Dawlat. Barakallah fikum. Um, Jazakallah khair to Huda TV and the whole crew. You're doing an amazing job, um, and, and may Allah continue to bless Amen. and open uh, more channels, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Um, basically, I wanted to ask about um, Jama'a prayer in the masjid. As a woman, I know it's preferred to uh, make your bedroom your masjid, hmm. but I overhear the, um, the salah in the neighboring masjid in the neighborhood, and I hear um, the, from the beginning... Yeah. You, you, your voice is cut off. Can you hear me? I assume you're talking about praying behind the Imam while you are at home. We'll talk about this, inshallah. Nevshat from Oman. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa I'm very happy talking to you. I have uh, two small questions, Sheikh. Mm hmm uh, one is is sporting beer is beard is uh, mandatory in Islam. Saving and the, the beard, right? Is, uh, 
second question is uh, what what is the actual procedure to pray the witr one rakat three rakats or how we need to perform is it like maghrib prayer or okay two rakat <clears throat> something like that the first question is about the beard yeah is it sunna or uh, farad or witr i'm really confused hadur okay jazakallah khair wa jazakum barakallahu feekum uh um Khadija from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sheikh, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Sister Khadija. I have two questions for you, Sheikh. Please. Please, um, I'm asking about um, women going to salon to do their hair. Is it allowed? In hair salons, right? Yeah, hair salon. Mm. And my second question is about women driving. Is it also permitted for women to drive? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Please, Shed, what about um, feeding money if your husband gives you a money that is not enough for you to make uh, use of house expenses in your house? Can you take from the money that is allowed, maybe if he keeps the money where I can be able to reach, can I use from it? Is it permitted also? Because he used to give me money that is not sufficient for me to use in the house for my housekeeping. And it's not that did, he doesn't did, have; he has it. Khadija, did you discuss this with him earlier? I mean, did you tell him that the money that you're giving several me is several times? Several times. He is not interested. And, and he's vi financially capable, is he? Capable of. Yeah. Yes, he is capable of. What do you think the reason why he uh, stopped giving you enough? Well, I don't really know. Because the problem is, I'm a full housewife. He is not allowing me to do anything, neither job, school, or anything. I'm a full housewife. Yet the money he gives me for my allowances in the house, me and my children, I we am almost ten. I have five children. Mashallah. It's not enough. I always complain to him. Does he, he have a second, or third, me. or a fourth wife? No, I'm the only wife. Hmm. I'm the only wife. Bye. Okay. Thank you, Sister Khadija. Sister Amreen from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, my question is, can a man or woman perform wazoo when they have nothing on their body? Okay. And will their salah afterwards coming and uh, they perform uh, prayer will be valid? Okay. You most welcome. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, Brother Abdul Malik from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh ya shaykh. Abdul Malik, go ahead. I hear you. Good evening to you as well. Please, I uh, have one one question, yes, Sheikh. Uh, it's about uh, uh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that he said, "Ku amfusikum wa alikum nara." That's an ayah, ayah number six of Surah Al-Tahrim. It's not a hadith. No, Mashallah, Mashallah, yes, Sheikh. So I was uh, I was contemplating over the ayah. I'm trying to see what I can do, actually, to to see that I have a full concentration of the of the ayah. There is, like for example, my wife. If I have, uh, if I have, like, I want to give her a kind of dawah. So the, my wife is always trying to maybe bring her own way into it. You understand? So if I, to show her the way of the Prophet learned it, it really doesn't work out for her well. It, it doesn't like it the way it is. So now, if I see her going the wrong way, am I supposed to, how am I going to control her? Because sometimes I, I, I kind of get upset. So when I'm getting upset, I tend to do the wrong thing. So do I leave her to do what okay. she wants to do? I read you. I read you, Abdul Malik. I got your question. Barakallahu feek. Brother Adam from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Adam. Wa alaikum salam, Shaykh. How are you? How are you? 
Very good, thank you. Um, I was just, my question was, um, you know, for example, in Medina or Mecca, uh, when it comes time for Salah, so Maghrib, for example, you see um, a, a group of groups of people uh, not connected with the Jama'ah. I was just wondering, is that allowed? They're not they're following the Iman, but not together. I, I, I don't understand. What do you mean they're following the Imam, but they're not with the Jama'ah? What does it mean? They're like... Uh, Praying in different small groups. Uh, you mean because, uh, for instance, in the, the prophetic masjid, once the iqamah is called, uh, you find some rows are disconnected from the front yeah. of the masjid. They're praying in the back, in the middle, right? Exactly, exactly. That's I read that's you. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Where are you from, Adam, originally? I'm from Australia. Australia. Yes, yes. I figured. Thank you, Adam. Barakallah feek. Are you studying there? Yes, I'm in the Ma'had al Arabic Institute, yes. Kaifa Haluk? Bakhair, Alhamdulillah. How's your Arabic now? Alhamdulillah, Mashi, I'm more Alhamdulillah. Mashi. Alhamdulillah, Okay, good, good. Alhamdulillah, Shikla. Barakallah, Fiq. Tayyip. Abdullah from Algeria. MashaAllah, he observes fasting every 13th, 14th, and 15th of every lunar month. As the Prophet has said, Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet advised him to observe three qualities. One of them is to fast these three days of every month and to pray duha and to pray witch before going to sleep. Uh, fasting these three days are the best. But if one skipped the 13th or the 14th or the 15th, he was traveling, he was sick, he was not feeling well, he was not capable, so by fasting any other three days, that will make it up. The purpose is to fast at least three days of every month, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whoever does a good deed will be rewarded ten times thereof. So three times ten, and you're talking about thirty, that's equivalent to the number of days of months, of each month. So if you fast every month three days, that's similar to fasting for the whole month, and every month, that will be similar to fasting for the whole year round. That is the idea. But those days are the best and the most ideal and they should have the priority. Now he said that I would like to observe fasting like Prophet David. The Prophet said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. The best fasting was the fasting of Dawood. He used to fast on every other day. Would fast one day, skip the next, then fast the next day and skip the next and so on. So he says, if I do that, then it will not be possible to fast the three consecutive days, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Okay, I guess he figured out the answer from the previous answer I said. Uh, if you fast throughout uh, the month every other day, that would be perfectly fine, inshallah, uh, as long as you got to fast three days of every month. Barakallah feek wa jazakallahu khayran kathira. May Allah increase you in kindness towards the love of the deen. Abdullah from India. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, quick question. Um, if um, you have a lawyer, a Muslim lawyer, uh, working in a firm, and the firm does you know, corporate work in corporate companies and uh, does the financing as well, and um, the financing, of course, is uh, based on the law. And the lawyer is just reviewing the loan documents, but is not witnessing the signature on, on, on these mm. loan documents. No. And also, uh, the lawyer is preparing a pledge, you know, Rahim, like um, as, as is recognized in, in the Quran. So this is halal, but it is backed, um, it is endorsed by, it is endorsed, the underlying reason for the, for the pledge or the security is, um, is on an interest based loan. So my question is, um, let's say if the, the, the lawyer's work is like maybe 50% uh, reviewing loan <laughs> agreements, etc., which are interest-based. Abdullah. Um, how, how does the lawyer... Abdullah, how is it, how can you hear me? Treat his income. Fine. Yes. Uh, uh, if you can hear me, uh, if, if you have in this firm to witness uh, or testify to a contract which includes riba, giving or charging interest, then that is haram because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, Allah riba akilahu wa mu'kilahu wa katibahu wa shahidayh. 
So the witnesses and uh, the clerks and the person who types or writes the contract and he knows that this is a RIBA contract are all involved along with the one who charges and the one who pays interest. So it should not be a part of that. Uh, lawyers, lawyers, uh, they should understand that that the access that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them to defend people should be utilized in the proper way. Sometimes lawyers, some lawyers are nothing but liars. They think this job is all about lying and uh, twisting the truth. I'm just extending the answer to cover the, 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 the job of those who are in the law firm or in, in, in the law business. If you know that this is something that opposes the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not do it. Do not do it. Do not be a part of it. And one should not say that everybody is doing it. And if I, do, if I do not do it, somebody else will do it. So if you are an employee in this firm, will you take the cases or the contracts that you concluded writing, which are halal and do not contradict the sharia or the deen. Wallahu a'lam. Barakallahu feek. Zakaria from Libya. Salam alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm fine, alhamdulillah, akhi. Alhamdulillah. I love you for the sake of Almighty Allah. Ahabaka ladi ahbabtani fi jazakallahu khayran. Alhamdulillah. And I... Well, you deliver the message already. Barakallahu feek and please try again, Zakaria. Jazakallahu khayran. Okay, let's take a short break, and inshallah we'll catch up with these uh, questions and their answers uh, in a little bit, so stay tuned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty, and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for? And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes the path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Huda Academy, please visit us online at hudaonlineacademy.com. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Ask Huda. Uthman from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, your family. Fine, alhamdulillah, shukullah. You have questions? Yes, I, you know the last time we spoke, the last time you, I thought I have some questions in the email. And he said, I'm going to send you another email. Maybe I can pass them through it. I don't know. Is it still possible? Why well, don't you deliver your questions on the phone to the control and they will deliver them to me, inshallah, after the program. Okay? Okay, I should call it after the program. Yeah, right now, you can just uh, dictate the questions to them and they will deliver them to me. Barakallah feek. Zakallah khairan. Barakallah feek. Um, Umm Bilal from the KSA, uh, her relative, mom, grandmother, uh, is wearing a denture, artificial teeth. And she's concerned about at the time of making wudu for rinsing the mouth and gargling, does she have, al mother does she have to take the denture off? No, she doesn't have to. Because the water would reach even beneath the teeth and beneath the denture. So you don't have to take them off in order to make a wudu. And I uh, also would like to uh, extend the answer to another similar question pertaining wearing dentures. We know that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a lot of virtues for using the miswak uh, or brushing the teeth, particularly before the wudu. Would that apply to the artificial teeth? Yes, and you will get the same thawab, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. <clears throat> Abu Hassan's long question about his uncle, whose father's brother, who left an inheritance, and it's in his name, he also mentioned that somebody was adopted, whatever. I want to say that the adopted child is not one of the heirs. That's the first fact. Is not one of the heirs. So he does not inherit by the Sharia. Ah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are not your sons. They are not your real sons. But your brothers and your friends. So in this case, he does not have a share in the inheritance. But the person who adopted him can write a wasiyah for him or a will. It should be within the one third or less. This is a part which the person is free to dispense his wealth after his uh, life. Uh, in, while he's alive, he can write the wasiyah to be dispensed after his uh, life is over. When he dies, only within one third. Anything above the one third will be neglected and the wasiyah will be completely ignored because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And also the wasiyah does not apply to any one of the ears. La wasiyata li warith. No one sh should write a wasiyah or a will for one of the ears because he already has a share that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined for him uh, or her. But I believe I explained the part of the adopted child that he does not have an ordained share in the uh, inheritance whenever the person who adopted him, whether it's he or she, uh, pass away. Uh, if you are the only ear and your uncle just simply wrote everything in your name, there is no problem. Enjoy it. It's perfectly halal. If you are the only ear. If you're not and you know that the Sharia specified the share for somebody else, a, uh, uh, an uncle, a nephew, a brother, a sister, then you should neglect the wasiyah of your uncle and distribute the share what you already have in your name, distribute it according to the sharia, ah, or you too will be involved in the sin. May Allah guide us to what's best. Sister Dawlat from Nigeria, but after I answer Zakaria from Libya, Assalamu alaikum. Zakaria. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. So my question, my question, Shaykh. So Alhamdulillah, since I've been starting watching your program, so Alhamdulillah, so I have intention of further my, I mean, my Islamic uh, education. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah, I'm the only one that, because there's not any supporter for me, I have to provide for my family. And so I'm, I'm asking if there's any school which you can recommend for me 
maybe in Saudi on any way, so whereby I can be I can be able to have any cost as a partner. So secondly, my wife is is there any my wife used to go to salon, Sheraton. So I have to t I used to tell him that is it permissible for a woman to be using shampoo for his, for his head or not? Shampoo for what? Straight in for, the hair? For their hair, yes, yes. No. Thirdly, is it permissible for them to be using wave on? Wig? Wave on, wave on, wave on. Wave, wave on, wave on. Ah. Okay. Barakallah fi. Saeed from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Sheikh. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and all the crew from Buddha TV. Amen. And you too and all the audience. Yeah. Barakallah fikum. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my question is, um, I have a, a dead, uh, dead, uh, dead uh, father. May Allah have mercy on you. Is it permissible for me to perform a nightlight prayer on his behalf every Friday? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. As far as yeah, the prayers, you can neither offer nafila or fard on behalf of anybody else, alive or dead. As salah yeah. is the ibadah which must be done by the person himself or herself. You cannot do that, but you can make dua for him in the prayer and after you finish your prayer. You can give any charity and give the reward for him. Uh, you can perform Hajj or Umrah in his state. But, and if he owed fasting, you can fast on his behalf. But the prayer, no. No one prays on behalf of anybody else. Barakallahu feek. Zakallahu khair. Brother Saleh from the United Kingdom. Assalamu alaikum, Saleh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Saleh? Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Alhamdulillah, I have a question. Please go ahead. I'm working, I'm working in a fruit and vegetable company mm -hmm. where you are not allowed to eat it. The fruit, there yeah, nobody is allowed to eat what they have. They have some who are mine and they eat but in hiding. Mm. And they have another fruit that they throw that, is, that are not good, but they can eat it, but still they throw it, they put it in dumps. Mm. So nobody is allowed to eat it also. Okay. Yeah, so the one they are throwing, even if you are going to get it, you have to hide. So I just want to know whether it won't be this or not it's been to be put in the dump. Is it allowed or not? Okay. Barakallah fiqh salih. Jazakallah khair. Brother, are you from Norway? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to ask you something. Uh, mute your TV first, are you please? Okay, okay. And I want to ask you about purification. You know, when you making when you making salah before you make salah. And if you how 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 are you washing your socks? You're talking about wiping over the socks, right? I'm wiping over, over the socks. Yes. Harder. Okay, inshallah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Are you from Norway? <clears throat> um, I will just take this last call from Bashir from Nigeria and please pardon me the brothers and sisters who are still on, uh, on the line I will be able to take any further questions um, Inshallah Azza we will try to catch up next episode with the, the questions Assalamu alaikum Bashir Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I want to ask you some question. I don't want to ask you a favor. Mute your TV, please. Okay, thank you so much. Zakallah khair. I didn't say hang up, though. Dawlet uh, from Nigeria. Uh, she likes to pray in Jama'ah. And uh, she knows that it is better for a woman to pray at home, even in her bedroom. But it is permissible to pray in Jama'ah in the masjid. And you will get the same reward. If the masjid is closed to you, you can attend the jama'ah in the masjid, but you cannot pray at home behind the imam who's praying in the masjid near 
by. Nasheed from Oman, growing the beard, according to the vast majority of the scholars, it's a must for men. Um, and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned several ahadith in this regard. He said, أَوْفِرُوا اللِّحَا وَحُفُوا الشَّوَارِبِ Save the beards and trim or shave the mustache. Uh, offering the witcher prayer, the least is one rak'ah. The best and the most ideal is to pray three rak'ahs. You can pray all the three rak'ahs <coughs> all together without a middle tashahud. Only one tashahud by the end, by the last rak'ah and taslim. Or you can pray two rak'ahs, tashahud and taslim. Then you pray one rak'ah by itself and that too is considered which The two rak'ah by themselves and the one by itself. Khadija from Nigeria, <coughs> going to a hair salon for women, uh, if it is safe, especially with the hidden cameras everywhere, and if uh, she's a Muslim woman, uh, that is permissible. You're not following a specific Western fashion, not necessarily Western fashion of uh, imitating any of the non-Muslims, then it is permissible. And you're not going out with your hair without hijab, that is permissible. <clears throat> it only becomes prohibited when you expose yourself to the fitna. If you sit in a salon where sometimes men are working, haram. Or if you do your hair in order to go out or attend a party without hijab, that's haram. Or you take a picture of a woman, uh, people call them their idols, and say, I want to be like this woman, who is a non-Muslim woman, that's not permissible. Driving for women is permissible. I don't see why should it be prohibited as long as she does not travel out of town or travel a travel distance without a mahram. And as long as she feels safe and secure because we all know that driving at night in remote areas is very dangerous for men, let alone for women. <clears throat> Her husband is or has become a little tight. So can she take out of his wealth without his knowledge? Uh, this is a very touchy question because we have to investigate whether the Prophet ﷺ had been asked the same question by Abu Sufyan's wife. She said that he's kind of tight. Can I take from his wealth? He said, خُذِي مَا يَكْفِيكِ وَوَلَدَكِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ On reasonable basis. Like other families, you spend like 500 bucks a month, so take the 500 bucks. But uh, we don't know. Some people like to be extravagant. Some people like to buy ready-made food and they don't want to cook. So we cannot just, I cannot just give you a signature and say, yes, you can go ahead and uh, take from his account without his knowledge, without knowing really what are the reasonable bases which similar families survive on. It could be a way of disciplining the children because sometimes the children, when they find everything available, they do not appreciate the ni'am, the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to try some, uh, uh, not hunger, but they wanted to eat something, but unfortunately we cannot afford it. We don't have fun for it. That will make them appreciate what they have and they got used to. And break the routine of Elf and Nama or getting used to the Nam. And being from United Arab Emirates, performing wudu in the nude, permissible. And that's why when we take ghusl or shower to live the major impurity or for refreshment, in the ghusl we can make wudu. It does not affect the validity of wudu and with this kind of wudu of course he can pray and the prayer will be invalid if everything else is fulfilled the ayah of uh, surah tahrim ya ayuha alladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum naran wa quduha an-nas wal hijara alayha malaikatun ghilazun shidad the ayah abdul malik said uh, that he advises his wife he enjoins us right and he asks her to do what's good if your differences within the area of the permissibility then that's fine if she does something permissible and you want her to do something much better. If she does not, then you're fine and she's fine. But if one's wife decided to go out wearing those tight jeans, locker jeans and revealing clothes, uh, it's your responsibility. Likewise, your daughter. If you know that your son is into illegal activities and he's living under your roof, it is your responsibility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats the problems from the roots. He ordered us, number one, to choose rightly the mother, the future mother of the children. Number two, from birth until they grow up, 
educating them in Islamic fashion so that you maintain this kind of protection. All you who believe protect yourselves, your family members, and those who are under your guardianship. Again, is the fire of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Again, it says fire. We ran out of time, but we just have a couple of questions to begin with next time, inshallah. And until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. I will say this, and I will pray for you, 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 and I will pray for you.